Hello everyone, and welcome to another T-Tutorials. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create this effect, where the shape of your camera changes based on the audio that's playing. We will need three main plugins for this. The first one is going to be the Waveform plugin, which is what's producing the shape. The Scale to Sound plugin, which helps finish off the effect so that it doesn't look super static. And then the last part will be StreamFX, which is basically everything else, using the Dynamic Mask to create the transparency, the source mirror to help us set up all those different spots on the border and of course the SDF effect to create the colors that you see on the outside that way it changes along with the shape and depending on your audio setup you may also need the wind capture audio plugin but we will cover that once we get around to there so without further ado let's dive right in so here we have the waveform plugin you just go to the downloads as usual there are is a setup as well as manual methodologies. So it's fairly straightforward. The scale to sound, which only has manual setup. So you'll need to follow the instructions, but it's just like any other plugin. StreamFX also has a installer for you. So I suggest you go that way. Thankfully that one lets you pick where you want it to go to. And then of course, if you need it, in case you don't have a uh, audio cables or any other methodology for capturing a particular source. You can do the wind capture audio here. Same thing, also installers and things like that. So here we have a basic setup of OBS and I have my source for my audio right here, which is currently what is producing this. So basic scene here, background, we'll be working on this later. Dynamic mask scene, which currently is empty. And we have a waveform mask scene, which is where the bulk of our work is going to happen. So obviously we need to capture the audio first off. So again, if you have virtual cables, you will probably be using audio input capture or audio output capture. So I'll just call this music cable. And in my case, cable D is what I usually put that on. So if you look down here, you see the music cable. Audio is moving with that. I'll just turn that one off real quick. If you don't have that and you want to use the application capture, it's the application audio output capture here at the top. I'll just call it pretzel because that's what I'm using. I'll have to go and select the pretzel.exe, add executable, and okay. And so now you see pretzel down here. We're going to go ahead and use that one just for the rest of this tutorial. But we don't really have to mess with it anymore other than that. So our next option is going to be adding a image actually. I'll just call it wave box. And this will be an image that is going to define our basic shape. So when no music is playing, this is what it's going to look like. And I will be able to provide this to you probably just as a link somewhere in the description. And there's not much we have to do with this one. We're just going to go ahead and lock it so we don't accidentally drag it around later. Now that we have our baseline to work with, we're going to go ahead and add in our waveform visualizer. We're going to start with the top. We'll just call it top one. We'll select pretzel as our audio source. As you can see, it's already working. It will be 700 as the width. We'll leave 225 as the height. We will not have to change most of these things. Skip those for the filter, Landcross, Gaussian. Land, I don't even know how to say that. Gaussian, and I'll set it to three. Then we go down here, and we're going to go ahead and select the black color. Because this is going to go on the top, and this is what's going to allow it to expand upward. So we'll move this over here. And then what we're going to do to simplify the process in case we ever want to make changes is we're going to start using source mirrors here. Let's right click add source mirror and we'll just call this top two. Choose our top one source. And so as you can see, this is a exact duplicate of that one. We'll right click transform and we'll flip horizontally, snap it up against this one. And so now what we got to do is we got to make sure that these are even. So if you look here, they're slightly off. So let's go ahead and click this. Move it up one. Not enough. Move it up. 
Uh, move it up one more. Now they look even. So we'll select both of these sources over here. Group selected items. And we'll just call this top. Now we're going to go ahead and select this. Use the arrow keys to drag it down until the black line disappears. Looks pretty good. Go ahead and right click. Transform. And center horizontally. So make sure it's right in the middle. Doesn't seem to have done it. Right click, transform, center horizontally. There we go. And we'll lock it so we don't actually move it. So now we're going to work on the bottom part. Right click. And we're going to do another source mirror. We'll call it bottom one. And we will select in the, uh, I guess our top one once again. Let's drag it down here. Obviously it's the wrong way around. So let's go ahead and right click transform. And we're going to flip vertically. We drag it down. So you can see that it's now doing the mirror of this basically. And we're going to do that. Right click on this one. Copy. And we'll go ahead and paste duplicate. And we'll go ahead and rename the bottom two. You want to drag this over here, right click, transform, flip horizontally. Let's snap it up against that one. And once again, we need to make sure these are even with each other. So bring that up. That looks correct. Okay. Once again, we select these two, right click, group selected, name it bottom. And I guess arrow keys to bring it up. We need to close up this little red gap here. You see? You need to right click off of it to make sure that little box goes away. I'm going to bring it up one more just in case because it might affect it later. Select, right click, transform, center horizontally. And that's in place. Lock the group. So now we're going to work on the sides. What we're going to do is add a new waveform visualizer or right one. Once again, we'll choose pretzel. This one will be 370 for its width. Scroll down Gaussian and three. Scroll down again. We're going to choose red this time around. And it might be hard to see, so we'll just drag it into here. We're going to right click on it. Transform, rotate counterclockwise, 90 degrees. It's going to go over here. Once again, we're going to add another source mirror. Right two. We're going to select our right one source. So that's our base for the sides. Here right here, we're going to rotate it counterclockwise, 90 degrees. It's still not right, so it's right click and flip horizontal. Since we rotated it 90 degrees, it flips it on the vertical view this time around because of that. So now we got to align these again. You can tell they're not quite right. So I'm going to click on it and use the arrow keys to line it up. It's good. Click, select both of these. Group. Select the group. Arrow keys over until that little black edge disappears not quite not quite there we go right click transform center vertically this time so that should be right up against that edge we'll lock the group and we're gonna add another horse mirror we'll call this one left one once again we'll select the right one source because that's our base. If you can't see it, it's hiding in the corner again. This time we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So it's on this edge. We're going to copy it. Copy. Right click. Paste duplicate. Rename the left two. We'll bring it up here. Right click. Transform. 
Air flip horizontal. Snap it up against that one. And once again, we need to align these guys. Let me advance the music so we can get... There we go. Now I can see it. Right up against... Looks good. It's like these two. Right click. Group. Left. Move the whole group over. So that little black edge disappears on us. One more just to be sure. And that looks good. Lock the group. So now our base is all set up. And we're going to show you now why we have the second scene. Because we're going to nest these two. So we're going to go ahead and right click in our dynamic mask scene. Add. Scene. Waveform mask. And we have that there. We're going to right click on this source. Filters. And then we're going to add the scale to sound. Uh, I like to use, first off, choose pretzel or whatever your audio source is. I like to select inverse so that it shrinks when the audio is playing. And we're going to make this uh, 0.25. Let's just drag it until it's about that. There we go. And so you see it's doing this. But the edges are showing this black. And that will cause an issue because then it will be seen or be visible and it will look strange. So what we got to do is we got to add a color source. We'll just call this color red. Choose the red color. And drag it underneath waveform mask. And that takes care of the little black edge popping in and out. We can lock these. Now we go to our main scene. Now what we're going to do, right click. We need to add our camera. So we'll do a video capture device. And I'll select what I use for my camera here. So we got that. We're going to right click on the camera. Filters. And the first filter we're going to add is going to be the dynamic mask. We're going to select the dynamic mask because that's our finished product. We need to scroll to the bottom. And for the red input, we're going to put negative one because that's what we want to be transparent. And so as you can see here, that's where the transparency is. Now what we're going to do is add one more filter. And it's going to be the SDF effect. And I like to use the outer glow and the inner glow. So let's say you have a color scheme where black and red is what you use. So let's go ahead and choose the black for the out outside. And I'm going to go ahead and make it, let's say, 10 wide. And I'm going to make it soften it up. So it's not as uh, hard of an edge. And now I'm going to do the inner glow. I'll choose the red. Same thing. I'll make this 10 and soften it up. And so now you have this effect, which the music come back. You have this effect. And at this point, you would just, uh, you know, change it and move it to wherever you need it. Like you normally would have your camera. And there you go. You got that. If you need to change the colors, you can do that. You want to change how thick the border is or whatever. And there you go. And let's say that you pause the music or the music stops and is in between. You see on both of these that it just has a basic shape. But it still looks pretty decent because it has a border and everything like that. So it just doesn't look, it doesn't turn into some weird, bizarre thing. But then once the music does come back, it's moving. And so you can add that a nice effect to it where it's not just like little bars moving around or maybe the top or what have you. It's just the whole thing. So it's a really cool effect. And if you want, you could have this be something else. So let's go back here real quick. And let's say you want it to be like your voice and that it makes it change. Because since we made it where we have a bunch of mirrors, if I want to change that, I only need to change it on two. Because this top one is the, the basis for the top and the bottom. So I'll open that up. And let's say I want it to be, I don't think I have my mic set up anywhere else on here, but if I wanted to add my microphone, for instance, I believe that one is the B cable for me in this case, right? I'll add that in here. So we have the mic. So now we go to top and I'll change this to the mic. 
And so, whenever I'm talking, that should be where it changes. So now I select the other one. This is our base for the edges, the sides, I should say. I change this to mic as well. So now it's only changing when I'm talking. And let me scale this up so you can see the effect a little bit better. I am the one that, that makes things change. <laughs> so there you go. Any audio source you want, you could do this. If the effect isn't quite the way you want it, maybe the peaks are too big, maybe the color isn't right, all of that is customizable. So however you want it to be, you can you can change that. And maybe you don't want to put it on your camera, maybe you want to put it on, say, the chat or something like that for some reason. Same thing. You just need to change the base image that you would use to surround it. Uh, that you'll have to make on your own because every single case is going to be different. But either way, this should be a pretty good starting point and give you all the pieces you need to modify in any way you feel fit. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to give you at this point. So, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed and learned something. I will see you next time. Later.